EdvoTech Tips Using Buffer in Electrophoresis Experiments. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Daniel Snowflack and I'm a scientist at EdvoTech. Today I want to discuss with you a common question we get from our teachers. What happens if I use water instead of electrophoresis buffer when running an agarose gel electrophoresis experiment? First, what is electrophoresis anyway? This biotechnology technique uses electricity and a porous gel matrix to separate mixtures of molecules into discrete zones or bands based on the physical properties of the molecule. This includes the molecule's charge, its shape, and its size. Electrophoresis is a versatile technique. It can be used to separate dyes, proteins, and nucleic acid like DNA and RNA. Because of its ease of use and its ability to separate molecules, electrophoresis has become one of the most common techniques used in the research lab but there are ways to mess up your experiment. One step that's easy to overlook is the preparation of the electrophoresis buffer. The buffer does need to be diluted to the 1x concentration, plus it is clear and colorless just like water. So it would be easy to accidentally use water instead of buffer. But what is the buffer and why is it important for electrophoresis? We use electrophoresis buffer for two main reasons. First, since water is a poor conductor of electricity, we add charged ions to water, which allows the current to flow through the gel. Second, the buffer keeps our samples at a biologically appropriate pH that is going to preserve their charge or structure. We send buffer to you as a 50x concentrate, which you'll dilute to 1x in your classroom laboratory. You'll add one part of concentrate for every 50 of your final solution. So if you're making 3 liters of buffer, you add 60 mils of concentrate. Check the kit literature for specifics with your experiment. Now here's the fun part. Let's do the experiment. What happens if I use water instead of electrophoresis buffer? So here is our experimental setup. I'm going to be using water in the left hand electrophoresis chamber and electrophoresis buffer in the right hand chamber. I'm going to be running two different kinds of samples in this experiment. The top samples are going to be dyes and the bottom samples are going to be DNA. I'm going to place the prepared agarose gels into the electrophoresis chambers. Now, these agarose gels were prepared using electrophoresis buffer or water. I'm gonna pour water, just regular bottled water, over the gels on the left-hand side. And then, on the right side, I'm gonna add our prepared electrophoresis buffer. The DNA and dye samples I'll be using today are in our quick strip format. They're already aliquoted and ready to use, which makes for easy pre-lab prep. We load the prepared samples into our gel using an adjustable volume micropipette. The pipette tip is switched between each well to prevent any kind of cross-contamination. You'll notice I use the pipette tip to puncture the foil of the quick strip before loading the sample. Now our gels are loaded. We're going to put the covers on our electrophoresis chambers and turn on the electricity. What we can see here in this time-lapse video is on the right-hand side where we used electrophoresis buffer in the gel and in the chamber, we can see the progression of the samples through the gel. On the left-hand side, however, where we used water, we can see the samples are not migrating through the gel and they are not separating into well-defined bands. Now, when the gels are done running, we're going to take them out of the electrophoresis chambers and analyze them using the true blue tube. So, here are the results from our dielectrophoresis experiment. The gel on the right-hand side used buffer and the gel on the left-hand side used water. What you can see is that on the right hand side, there is a really good separation between the dyes. We can see clear bands. On the left hand side, where we used water, you don't get that same separation and migration. All the dyes are clustered near the top. Now, let's take a look at our DNA gels. Here, we're looking at the tracking dye in our buffer gel and in our water gel. What you can see is that the dye migrated through the gel where we used buffer and not through the gel where we used water. Again, our buffer gel is on the right hand side and our water gel is on the left. In these gels, we used CyberSafe so that we can see the migration of the DNA through the gel. And what you can see is in the gel where we used water, we don't see the DNA migrating through the gel. In the gel where we used buffer, we can see the DNA bands separating and migrating in each of these wells. Our DNA is stuck near the wells in the water gel. So through our experiment today, we showed that electrophoresis buffer is necessary for the success of both DNA and dielectrophoresis experiments. When we use water instead of buffer, electricity cannot be conducted through the gel and we cannot separate our molecules. Have a question that you want answered in our next video? Call, email, or send us a message on social media. We would love to hear from you.